Hey guys, this is Charles Jaeger with Metal. This tutorial is gonna be an overview of Freeform Pro. The goal of this overview is to give you a quick baseline of the plugin, and we're gonna focus on three of the main functions, and those are mesh distortion, displacement mapping, and primitives. A brief description of Freeform Pro would be that it's a true 3D displacement plugin, and it bases the displacement off of luminance values. Before we get started, I do want to mention that you can download a free demo version of Freeform Pro from ascripts.com. I'm also going to have a free project file available that you can download from ascripts.com as well. Check for the link in the description of this video. One other thing, it's also recommended to work in a 16-bit color space when you're using Freeform Pro. Alright guys, let's just jump in and let's start off with the mesh distortion. So what I've got in this first composition is just a movie title image. You can see it's kind of like an end card that might be at the end of a trailer. And this is just a 2D image, and we're going to apply Metal Freeform Pro and do some things to this to give it a little bit more depth, maybe a little bit of movement. Uh, again, just kind of emulating some nice movie titles at the end of a trailer. So with the image selected, I'm going to come here to Effect. We're going to come down to Metal, and we're going to select Freeform Pro. And once we apply that, you will see a grid appear on your image, and it's now actually 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and right click here and I'm gonna create a new camera. I'm just gonna have it be the default 50 millimeter. And you can see I go ahead and hit C on the keyboard. I can orbit around this and we can now see this is in 3D space now. Now right now it still looks flat. We need to apply some distortion to this. Before we do that though, just so we can see it a little bit better, I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna add a new parallel light. I'm just gonna select parallel. I'm gonna set it to be 150% and click OK. And we can adjust that light as needed a little bit later. So I'm going to come back here to my movie title with Freeform Pro applied. I'm going to come down here to Grid. You're going to see we have this mesh distortion. And when I select the effect, we can see our grid currently on our image. And I'm going to go ahead and increase the rows and columns. And this is a 16 by 9 image. So I'm going to do 9 by 16. And that should give us perfect squares on this. And you can see we have these squares. So what I can do is I can select a point on this grid now I can actually move it around. You can see I'm actually distorting it. But again, what's cool about this is we're actually distorting this in 3D space. So if I go ahead and orbit the camera, you can now see it's like a dent we've added onto the title card there. You can see the way the light's kind of reflecting back on it. So I'm going to kind of emulate this as if it's like kind of dents in a door or something, and I can just push these in, or I can actually pull them the other direction as well. You can also see with the editing controls here, I can scroll this down and we can control the manipulation if I just want it to be on one axis. So I might change this to be Z only. That way I'm only pushing and pulling on these points. So I can bring this point out a little bit, almost as if it's like a dent from the other side of the door. And again, I can continue to, to adjust and manipulate these as needed. And you'll see we have these green handles here. Those are Bezier handles, so I can adjust that and tweak that if I need to add a little bit different type of distortion with that. And you can see how I can manipulate that there. So I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to turn the grid off. And I'm going to use the camera tool and we can orbit around. You can kind of see what we're doing, just placing the mesh on that. And I'm going to go ahead and select the light here, and I'm going to go ahead and just adjust the perspective. You can see we can create shadows, and you can kind of see how it reflects off the material. Now under 3D Transform, this kind of just controls the general transform of the Freeform Pro effect in 3D space. So you can see I can adjust the Z position and the X and Y position as well if I need to move that around or the rotation. Following that, we have some grid control points. If you want to just input in some values to adjust those points on that grid, you can do that here. And then we have the material properties. I'm going to tweak these a little bit just so you can kind of see how they react to the light. So you can see we have things like specular, and I can change how that looks, and shininess, and then metal. And we also have other options like reflectivity. If I want to add in a reflection map here, you can see down here we have reflection map. And just to demo this, I'll go ahead and pull in a reflection map that I've got here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull in this reflection map. It's an echo rectangular reflection map. Go ahead and solo it just so you can kind of see what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and turn off the visibility of that. Select back the movie title, and let's go down here under reflection layer. I'll select the reflection map. I'm going to set it to be equi rectangular. And let's go ahead and bring the reflectivity down quite a bit, but you can see how this actually looks now when we orbit the camera around. Getting those reflections on the surface. So let's go ahead and take a look at another scene I've got here that works well for the mesh distortion. That's this Space Nebula. Again, it's just a flat Space Nebula 2D image. And I went ahead and applied Freeform Pro to it. And if we go ahead and select the effect here, let's go ahead and increase the rows here, maybe to be like six and then four. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust a few of these points on the grid. I'll change it so it's only on the Z axis. And I'm going to rotate the camera here just so we can see this a little bit easier. But I'm going to push and pull on a few of these points. And now if I go ahead and come down here and I just select the camera tool and we orbit around this, you'll see that makes it a little more dynamic with that. But where this is really going to be powerful is that if I take this copy we have here, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that with Control D. And I have this set to a screen blending mode. So I'm going to come back up here under the 3D transformation. I'm just going to move this in Z space a little bit. So you can see how that projects that off of the front. And let's go ahead and rotate this as well in Z space. So now if I go ahead and select the camera tool and just orbit around this, you can see how much more dynamic in 3D we've converted that 2D image that quickly using Freeform Pro. So that's pretty convincing and that's a nice example of using 3D distortion on 2D images. Another quick example I want to show you here is this morph scene I have, which is, again, I'm using that 3D grid to morph between two different faces you can see. I'm just offsetting these points on the grid to kind of match up with the two different faces. If we go ahead and jump inside this composition and I select one of them, you'll see the actual grid. You can see how it actually changes from the original face and then into the secondary face. All right, now, so let's move on and look at displacement mappings. What I've got here is just a purple solid with Freeform Pro applied to it. And I've got a parallel light and I've got another composition here. I'll go ahead and solo this, which is just some fractal noise. So you can see it kind of gives us almost like a terrain type look to this. And we're going to use this now as our displacement map. So I'm going to go ahead and unsolo that. I'm going to select back on the solid here. And let's go up here to displacement mapping. And for displacement layer, I'm going to select that fractal noise composition. And now we can see the grid has appeared on our footage. I'm going to go ahead and turn off display grid. And let's go ahead and adjust the displacement height here. Go ahead and see what happens when I do this. Now as I increase the displacement height, you can see how the fractal noise is displacing our layer. And again, I can orbit around this with the camera tool. And you can see if I go ahead and adjust the parallel light here, we can see how that creates shadows and different specular lighting on the surface. I'm going to go ahead and undo that back to the original view. And this also works with animated displacement layers. So I'm going to go ahead and change the displacement height here back down to something like 12. And let's say I wanted this to kind of be like a background on something. Let's go ahead and jump into that fractal noise composition. And I'm going to animate the offset turbulence here so it's going to actually kind of move it down in time. So I'll just move down to the end here and you can see it's just kind of like it's flowing downward. And then let's go back to the beginning, do a keyframe for evolution. Let's go back to the end and set this on something like one. So now if we go ahead and scroll through, you can see it's kind of moving and flowing there. So let's go back over to our original composition. And we we'll go ahead and do a quick RAM preview on this. And you can now see how that texture, that displacement mapping is actually animating onto our solid. Just kind of a subtle background movement there. And if we wanted this to have even more of a flow to it, we have some other displacement options. You can see we have displacement noise here. And what I can do is go ahead and increase the amplitude of this. This is kind of like random displacement noise. And we can have this evolve as well. So I'm just going to set a keyframe for the evolution and move down here to the very end. And we'll just increase this something like 10. And I may also want to adjust the direction of this. I believe it's going to be kind of flowing upward default there. So I'm going to change the direction of this. 180 degrees. Let's go ahead and RAM preview this now. Now you can see we kind of have this like dual, almost like ocean waves flow going on where we have the fractal noise as the surface distortion. You kind of have this lower, deeper distortion with the noise evolution. Now another great example I can show you with displacement mapping is going to be on portraits or something where you want to create your own custom displacement map based on the image. So you can see if we go ahead and select the camera tool here and kind of orbit around this image. You can see the face has a subtle kind of 3D parallax effect to it. And I'm doing that with displacement mapping, a custom one that I created. And again, you can kind of see how this would really work well with like the Ken's burn effect on different photos. And again, just making images much more dynamic. Almost gives it the appearance that it's shot in really extreme slow motion. And we can take a look at the depth pass that I created for this. I just painted this actually in After Effects. You can see it almost looks pretty humorous. But again, I'm just wanting to separate different facial features and the lighter colored areas are going to be closer to the camera. So you can see what that looks like. And I'm just projecting that onto this image. And that's what's creating that little bit of extra depth we see here on this image as we rotate around it. Now, if we rotate too far, it's going to break the effect. You can see it's pretty low poly geometry that we're using to kind of create that displacement. But that's really all we need to fake this appearance to the eye. And what's also cool about this, if we actually go on the reverse side of this, 
it kind of creates a concave onto the image. And I don't know if you've ever seen this effect before, but this is in a lot of like haunted houses, the way they make statues appear as if they're kind of rotating and looking at you all the time. We've actually created a very similar effect to that with this by looking at it in reverse. You can see when I rotate the camera here, it's gonna look as if the face is almost turning to look directly at the camera because we're actually looking at kind of a concave image here with the inverse of that displacement map. So then I think that's a pretty neat effect you can do with your own custom displacement maps on images. Finally, another example is using actual video footage to drive your animation and your displacement. So you can see we have these kind of like pull waves here atop of our image, and we can see we have a little bit of this distortion. You can see right atop her eye right here as that distortion goes over, it kind of creates this wave, and you can really notice it on the text as well. And so what I'm doing this with is I've got this image here which has Freeform Pro applied to it, and I'm doing all that animation just off of this stock footage clip here of these waves that I converted to be black and white, add a little bit of extra contrast to it just to make it pop and stand out a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and unsolo that. And what I did to accent this shot a little bit more was I overlaid the original stock footage on top of this footage with the displacement. So if I go ahead and solo the original footage here and we look at this, you'll see that displacement occurring kind of subtly over top the image. And again, that's what's kind of creating that accent is having both of them on top of each other. It really makes it look quite nice. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next function. That's going to be primitives. And this is going to be creating primitive shapes and distorting those and offsetting those, again, using Freeform Pro. So what I've got here is just some stock footage of these ocean waves. You can see as this kind of comes through over the shore. And I went ahead and applied Freeform Pro to this footage. And let's go ahead and toggle down here the primitives options we have. And I'm going to go ahead and select to have a cubes primitive here. We have different shapes we can select from. So I'm just going to select cubes. And I'm going to adjust the scale of this. I'm going to change this on the X, Y, and Z to be 7 for each of these, just so we can kind of see what's happening. So we have this whole grid of cubes here, which actually has the original footage as a texture. And you'll also see we have this grid down here for X and Y. So I'm going to change this to be 200 by 100. And that's going to give us a nice grid that really fills in. We can actually see the original footage back on this. So we can start to get an idea of what's happening. But we really can't tell that much actual 3D depth is going on right now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to right click. I'm going to create a new camera and go ahead and click OK. And if I just go ahead and rotate around this, we see we are dealing with a 3D layer. But again, these shapes are pretty small, so it still kind of looks like a flat image. So I'm going to come back down here and select my footage. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to displacement mapping. And I want to the displacement layer to be the actual footage I'm working with. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And watch what happens with these cubes as I increase the displacement height. You can see now they're starting to separate themselves, again, based on the actual video. So this gives this really cool appearance of how they're kind of offsetting there. And we can really push this to the extreme if we want to. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick RAM preview of this and we can see what this looks like. You can see how cool this would be to use to create backgrounds and different elements. And one thing you might notice here, though, is it's a little bit jumpy with the footage. And because, again, those actual pixels are driving the displacement, there's a nice feature built into Freeform Pro called Contour. And I'm going to toggle this down. You can use this again with any of the displacements you're working with, but it's really going to work well with this particular example. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to apply a blur just over top the displacement. We can apply it over both. You can see if I go ahead and leave it as the default and increase this, it's going to apply that blur over both. But really, I want the original texture to stay intact. So I'm going to change this just to be displacement map. And when I increase this, you'll see how it kind of smooths over everything. And that's going to kind of get rid of a lot of that twitching and maybe a little bit of uh, unwanted movement in our scene. So if I go ahead and RAM preview this now, you can see how it's much more smooth. And again, we can see the footage kind of projected onto that. That really gives it a much more kind of buttery smooth movement there on everything. And again, we can rotate around this and you can see the actual 3D displacement that's happening. And again, we can push the displacement height to the extreme. But another option that we have, if we come down here for the primitives, we have a lot of different animation and texture options as well. I'm going to go ahead and toggle down the randomized position. We can go ahead and change the displacement. I'm going to change it just on the Z axis though. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the displacement amplitude. And you can see how this kind of shoots all of the cube primitives off of our image. And so you can do some cool keyframing with this, again, to create a nice animation. And again, if I wanted to at any point in time, I can come back up here and change this to be a different shape. Now I have tetrahedrons, and I can change this to be any of these other shapes we have here, which are selectable. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at using the primitives effect on footage that has an alpha channel. So I've got this other composition here, and what I've got is just kind of a shockwave effect. I'll go ahead and actually show you the original footage here. I'm gonna solo that and turn off the effects. So you can see this is just a shockwave effect. Go ahead and unsolo that now and turn the effects back on. I've got Metal Freeform Pro applied to it with the primitives effect. This almost creates like a digitized 8-bit look onto this. But we also have some options here with the generator. So I wanna show you this, and this is a good example for this. So with the generator, we can create multiple copies of whatever footage we're working with. So I'm gonna come down here to grid size for Z. I'm gonna set this to be four. And when I do that, you'll see it changed it a little bit. We really can't tell what's going on just yet, so we need to offset it on the Z axis. So as I do that, you can see we've created four different copies of that shockwave effect. So this really creates a cool kind of dynamic uh, animation that we can create. And again, it is all still fully 3D, so we can rotate and orbit around this. And we have all these other generator options we can adjust down here as well. So I might come down here to the rotation. If I didn't want all these to look completely identical, I might go ahead and adjust the spiral rotation for Z. And you can see what that does here, just kind of offsetting those a little bit. So they all don't look identical to each other. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the environment effects we have as well. So you can see we have things like mist, fog, and a sky dome. If we wanted to use something like a reflection map, I'll go ahead and demonstrate the fog really quickly here. So I'll just toggle this down and I'll set the fog type to be linear. And I'm gonna bring in the fog far range a lot closer. And you can see how this is gonna start to cover up the back end of our objects here. Now we can start to see kind of what this looks like with the fog and you can always adjust this to taste as needed and we can always change the color of it as well if we needed to just to kind of mix things up and change up the overall appearance. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is that the Freeform Pro effect actually works with the new VR360 effects that are built into After Effects. So you can actually render anything created with Metal Freeform Pro in 360. Again, I'll just demonstrate this really quickly with this alpha channel scene. So I'm gonna come up here to Window, and we need to launch the VR Comp Editor. And once that's been launched, I'm gonna go ahead and select Add a 3D Edit. And we'll just have this be a blank composition for the time being. And I will add that I'm gonna use a 3D Null Camera Controller, and that I am gonna use 3D Plugins. Let's go ahead and select Add a 3D Edit. Now inside of this 3D edit, let's go over here to Properties. And what I wanna do is select Import a 3D Composition. So I'm gonna select that. I'm gonna select my composition, which is this Alpha Channel composition that we were just looking at. I'm gonna select Import 3D Comp. So you can now see we're looking inside of that composition. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the Master Camera Controller here. I'm gonna select Position. And we can go ahead and move through in Z space. So we can actually fly through those shapes. And I'll just leave the camera kind of in between some of those. Let's go ahead and select Open Output Render. And now we're gonna see a 360 equirectangular projection of that composition. So if I go ahead and scroll through this, you can see how it's projecting this in 360 and wrapping completely around us for this particular scene. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this overview of Metal Freeform Pro. Don't forget you can always download a demo version from aescripts.com, as well as the project file with some of the scenes that I showcased. This has been Charles Jager with Metal. Thanks for watching.